Live from Rich Harvest Farms in Sugar Grove, it's Live Golf. We are here along with David Kaplan, Jonathan Hood with you. here on ESPN 1000, streaming on the ESPN Chicago app. We have a Hall of Famer between us right now, Cap. The Shark is here representing Live My Golf. My guy. It is Greg Norman. He's with us here on ESPN 1000 Chicago. Greg, thanks so much for stopping by. Yeah, it's great to be here, guys. And um, it's nice to have a little bit of fall in the air, quite honestly. A little chilly this morning outside of South Florida, but... Looking forward to catching up with you guys. So the first time your phone rang and someone said, hey, I'm calling from Liv mm-hmm. and we would like to talk to you. What was your initial reaction? Drop the mic. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. It was um, I knew there was a lot of this conversation going on in the background with other entities. PGL was being mentioned publicly. Um, so I was there, but I wasn't in the mix of all the, the discussions and and knowing what I went through in 1993-94 with the world tour and, uh, and understanding the, the, the virgin space that was sitting there within the ga- game of golf that needed to be exploited, new innovation, evolution in the game of golf. Uh, when they came and talked to me, it took me about three months, quite honestly, to run maybe four months to run through the whole analytics and understanding the business model, stress testing it and, and seeing the validity to the whole thing. And and what really convinced me was the institutions behind it. So the best of the best from the marketing, the econ- the, the economists behind it, the legal behind it. Um, and you couldn't really break the model. So I said to myself, look, I'm in. I'm a big believer. I've been fighting for 40 years for players' rights. Um, they're independent rights as independent contractors to be able to go and choose where they want to play. Um, so I wanted to add new value to the game new value for the fans, new value for the players, new value for broadcasting right across the board. And so for me to say yes, I had to give up a lot of other stuff because I have my other company, right? right? Greg Norman Company was in full cry. And so I had to pivot. So I had to make some adjustments. It took me about two months to put those in place. And, and once I locked in, I said to everybody, I said, if I'm coming on board, I'm 100% on board. I'm all in. I'm all in. I can't do two things. Um, so I focused 100% on live golf investments, um, because I knew the value that was in there, the necessary value of what we could bring to the game of golf. And here we are 12 rounds of golf into it. And for an upstart and a, uh, you know, beta, beta season, we've really done a phenomenal job of the, the product speaking to the public, the product being embraced by the players, the product being embraced by the fans. So, you know, I'm, I'm extremely proud of my team and what we've done and where we've positioned ourselves. Greg, I want to ask you about the state of golf. What did you think of the state of golf before Liv came aboard? Because now, as Cap and I were talking about the pop and circumstance, it feels different, feels fresh. What did you think of the sport before Liv came, al- came aboard? Yeah, that's a great question, John, because I think from my perspective, I look at it through quite a few lenses. As a player who played the game of golf for 40 years, we were doing the same thing. It was Groundhog Day. Every day was the same day, you know, no matter what tour you played on, right? Um, so it was stayed. And you look at the the demographics of the, the, the fan base for the PGA Tour is 64 plus years old. How do we reach down to the younger generation in this in this generation where we are today with the millennials and snackable content and all that? How do we reach down in the sport of golf, um, and how do we unlock that? So, um, you know, from from my point of view, where I was as a player to where we are today for the players that within live, and for the fans, it's like night and day, and it it really tells you it's a, a resonating very loudly about the fact that um, you know. It was just too many things were not looked at. Since Liv's come on board, the PGA Tour has stepped up. They would never have done that without competition. No doubt. Competition is the best thing in any sport, you know, as a coach, anything, sure. right? You want to be able to compete. You, on the radio show, you got guys compete with other radio shows to be the best of what you can be. So you got to get the best talent on board. So it's no different what we've done with Live and Golf, um, and we've created this new atmosphere, this new energy. And the PGA Tour had to react. So that tells us, me, that Live is the leader. Live is the future of golf. And as long as we keep maintaining our position and keep building and building and building, the tour is going to have to keep reacting, reacting, reacting. Now. We want to work within the ecosystem. 
We don't want to fight within the ecosystem. We build our business model from the ground up to work in every every facet of the every ecosystem, whether it's Europe, whether it's America, whether it's Australia, Japan, right? We want our independent players to play live and go play wherever else they want to go play. Happy days. That's what being an independent contractor is all about, right? So we look at that, where the PGA Tour has done the opposite. They've gone out and they've given these elevator events. You have to play 20 of them. So all of a sudden now the guys are going from 15 to 20. They're going, oh, my gosh, that's a little bit more than what they want to do. Um, so, you know, to, to stay on the tour. So you've kind of bifurcated the tour in some way. So if you're a sponsor of an elevator event, Okay, great. We've got a strength of fields going to be okay, not great, because the live players are not there. But then you have the non-elevated events. They're going, what happened to us? What happened to our commitment to the game of golf and PGA Tour for the last years, decades, or whatever it is? So um, we've really the comp the competition that live bought is you know the players should be thanking live, the tour players should be thanking live. Um, right across from the PIP all the way down to prize money. So um, I'm proud of the fact that that we've been able to get to this new place in the world uh, within golf and and opening up the barriers, even though there's a lot of headwinds for us and a lot, a lot of obstacles put on our path. We've opened the door up. We're showing the world a whole new competitive edge, and uh, we've been welcomed with open arms, quite honestly, um, across the board outside of Jacksonville. Okay, so, so you... <laughs> Have the, you won 89 events in your career. You got a couple open championships. I still feel for you with the whole Masters. As, you're mm -hmm. my guy. I told, showed you. I got a I shark know, on I my love freaking you, shark. arm. Yeah, yeah. So when Apple says, yeah, we're going to pass. We're not going to do the TV right now. We're not sure about associating. How do you convince people like that? Hey, there's a lot of great players here. It's an awesome product you should get on board. Like Apple says, we don't want to do it. Well, yeah, that's I, I don't I can't comment on Apple quite honestly, but uh, all I can tell you the interest coming across our, our plate right now is enormous. We're talking to four different networks um, and live conversations where offers are being put on the table um, because they see the value of our product. They can see what we're delivering in a four and a half hour window. Not if you saw what happened on September the fourth in Boston, that last hour of television, that is. 101% what live is all about that action pack everything was happening on four or five players looked at winning winning the individual a whole bunch of teams looked at winning the teams there was just fluctuations and strokes and it was like within seconds of each other not a laborious kind of okay let's wait and see the next group's passing through 13 and one group's on 15 so we got to wait another 45 minutes to see what happened all that stuff it's, it was just so action packed and since that moment guys is when there's been an elevated interest from networks that come and speak to us greg norman with us here on cap and j hood on espn 1000 and the espn chicago app as we're here at live the live golf tournament rich harvest farms here in sugar grove you swam with actual sharks you've had so many experiences greg give us one of your most exhilarating most uh, exciting experience experiences and do you do you have an experience that you want to have before you're done um, one of my most exhilarating experiences in life yeah. with, mm, with sharks. Yes. Uh, yeah, I had a very interesting dive one time with my two kids. My, my daughter's a master diver. My son's a great diver. So we, we do these kind of semi extreme Norman things. Mm. <laughs> so, um, and we're very, very confident under the water, but there was this one situation where we're diving in the Bahamas and we're coming up, uh, you know, from a wall dive and uh, we had to come back up tank to tank. So we had to be back to back because we were being circled by, you know, about four or five tiger sharks all the way up. There was an oceanic white tipper involved there and there was a couple of bull sharks. So there was a lot of interest in humanity under the water. <laughs> and we were coming up from about you know, 120, 130 feet. So we had to go through a deep compression stop and, and you had to be at a certain level a certain amount of time. And it's those at 15 feet. Um, when you have sharks around you, when their pectoral fins are down, not out, you know, in a calm fashion, um, you know, I'm worried more about my kids than anything else. And, and I was the last one to get in. And I have a photograph of me getting in the boat, you know, pushing the shark off. My kids were on board. I was fine. They were good. And so that was kind of like 
one of those moments um, in, in life that I thought was pretty exhilarating. My second most favorite dive I've ever done was I went with my daughter to Truck Lagoon, which is America's payback for Pearl Harbor. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we did some phenomenal extreme diving deep into the, the bowels of warships and seeing skulls wedged between um, the stringers and ships and stuff like that, you know, over 200 feet. And you do a decompression stop on a T-bar 15 feet for, you know, four or five hours and you just strap yourself in and you fall asleep, right? So those are the type of things that, um, you know, you really have to, you know, have your wits around you. But to be able to do it with your, your daughter or your son uh, is one of those moments in life that, you know, you'll probably never do it again, you know, but at the same time, and then jumping out, out of an aircraft is pretty cool fearing too. <laughs> so. I did want to ask you this. How did the... Look, I know the whole shark thing. It's big in Austria. But how did it become your ah. persona? Because I tried to parrot it. Yeah, well, look look at your 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 shark logo, right? When your biceps not flex, it looks right. like a minnow. When you flex that bicep, it looks <laughs> like a great white. Exactly. I like that. Man. I like that. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> 1981, I was leading the U.S. Masters uh, after two rounds. And nobody knew who I was. And um, I had long blonde hair and... So I go to the media room and they asked me, what do you do? I said, well, I grew up on the Great Barrier Reef. I dive with sharks. I'm a pretty aggressive player on the golf course. And I'll wake up in the morning, Atlanta Constitution, great white shark leads U.S. Masters. And that's how it all started. That's unbelievable. That's exactly how it started in 19, April 81. Um, so from there, it evolved. I got involved with Reebok. I was an endorsed player with Reebok. Yep. Paul Feynman, who owned Reebok at the time, wanted to create the Greg Norman collection clothing line, and we needed to have a logo. So the, the birth of the shark logo came in effect around about 87, 88. A lot of my money's in your pocket right there. I like the revenue. Keep buying it. That's it. You got it. 100%. So. Well, Greg, I'm, we're glad you stopped by the table again. Shark.com, by the way, you got on that early. Shark.com. All of your stuff is right there. Oh, yeah, it's all right there. Look, that's the other side of business, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and that's the beautiful part of what I understand about growing a brand and, and representing a brand. And that is some value. Very, I actually had dinner with the Australian team last night here, talking to them about the, the future outlook about their franchise. And how do you build a franchise? How do you build value in that franchise? It doesn't happen overnight. How do you own a market? How do you own local, regional uh, parts of the world? And and I was I'm just so enjoying uh, talking about this to these young kids and helping them understand that uh, we'll see a different pathway. I'm not going to be there. The, the person telling them what to do. I just want to be a person giving them a little bit of guidance here and there. And that's the value of what I've had through Greg Norman collection, uh, through Greg Norman company, through Greg Norman golf course design, all those things that we've actually expanded out over, you know, multiple period of time where it's life in perpetuity for the brand now is very exhilarating, but it's also very benefit beneficial to live because one of the reasons I truly believe they asked me to come on board is because of what I did as a player. Yep. Because of what I did with a brand, building a brand. In your image. Uh, well, image maybe, yeah. And I'm not afraid, right? I mean, I I truly believe in the process of live. I truly believe in the betterment for the game of golf across all sectors, men, women, college, everything. We're reaching, giving new pathways, the investment in the Asian tour with charity, charity all that stuff. Our CSR program, Live to Give, is phenomenal. And it just keeps building out, building out, building out. So all those components I've had touched in many aspects for 40 plus years of my life. And and I'm just proud to be able to to be at the helm now. You're the man. Hey, thank we you so much you. for stopping by. Thank we you, appreciate it. Appreciate you. The shark, Greg Norman, with us here uh, at Rich Harvest Farms in Sugar.